How to choose solving the clone versus the erase debate is our next topic here on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Welcome, everyone. All right, so there's always been a dilemma over all these years about which you, when do you use clone, when do you use erase, and now there's a new feature called Gen Erase, where it's using AI technology, totally different from the clone and the erase. We've done topics on that a little while ago. I want to stick to the traditional, the clone, and I also want to stick to the traditional erase tool um, just to give you an idea, because keep in mind with all the generative stuff, whether it's our products, Adobe's, or anyone, you need access to the internet. I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't have access to the internet and still get really, really good results. All right. So here's a shot we took in Iceland. And let me show you before and after. Here's what we're going to start with. Notice off to the right, we have a little issue with the man in the scene. There's, there's a lot of other things that I've cropped out, but I'll show you this in a moment. All right. Here it is here. Now, I am going to take you back in time to here. I'm not going to really go into how it was actually created. I want to get to this part here. So let's jump down here to develop. Let's see if it does it for me. Yep, it does. Okay, that's good. And then once I have it, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll, I know what I'll do. Um, this is where the crop is. So what I'm going to do is come back here and just discard all of it. There it is. Now I discarded all my changes and I'm going to reset my crop. This is the shot I took. No wonder Carl didn't recognize it. Um, we took this in Iceland. When we got up to the scene, right behind me was at least three busloads of people about to disseminate on this uh, area. So I knew I didn't have a lot of time. This was not the angle I wanted to shoot at. Look, you know, I, I saw this problem here. I didn't like this too much. There's a person in the background, a few people. But you know what? You had to make a decision. Do I take the chance now or not? I took the chance, all right? So I'm going to leave the crop the way it is, except I do want to straighten it out a little bit. Yep. And I want to rotate it. Yeah, that's not the way I want to rotate it. That's the way I want to rotate it. I, I just like that angle better. Um, and there's no writing on the church, so you can't tell. So let's do this. And I'm going to crop in. Oops, get back to where I was. I'm going to crop in just a little bit. All right, for now, let's just do this. There we go. All right, so now that I have the crop out of the way, when do I use clone versus erase? Well, this area here with the shadows in the background, well, let's use, let's use on this area here erase because I don't have to deal with the cloning part. Because with the cloning, I can select where I want to start from and then attack the area that I want to address. Here, I want AI to help me. So let me get out of the way for you. So I'm going to let it figure out that this doesn't belong. And I'm going to be careful not to do intersecting or contaminating. Now I'm going to click Erase. And there it is. Look at that. Did a great job at filling in the shadow and all the area here. That's awesome. All right, let's get rid of this... Uh, Photo bomber. Erase. Well, that came out really good too. Where else? Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of. Yeah, I want to get rid of this area here. The plaque. And let's not forget the shadow. All right, let's see what that does. All right, that came out good. So, so again, so when when do I choose to use erase? Well, in this case here, 
in spots like this where the pixels next to it can easily fill it in and not make it look like a repeated pattern over and over again, that's what I'm going to use erase. Uh, this person over here, I don't know if you're able to see them. Let me get rid of myself. Yeah, I didn't realize I didn't see this person. If she wasn't part of our group. All right, let's get rid of it. Her. Now, I went a little overboard here. I shouldn't have done that. Eh, it's fine. Before and after. Okay, now, in this case here, it's such a small area. It's not going to bother me. But look how it repeated that right here. This is where, if that bothers me to this point, that's where clone comes in. That's where, in fact, we could just do it. That That's where you'd come in and say, you know what? I don't want this to be so obvious that it's here. So what you could do is, let's say, this is a little dip in here. Let's say we collect, we select, this is our source. So it's nowhere near the area. And then you just paint over it. There we go. And now when we did that, I, I sampled from another area. So the point on the clone and the stamp, or the clone tool rather, is I want to select an area way away from what I'm working on so it doesn't blend right in. So now that I have that set, yeah, there's other people... I thought I noticed I did. Yeah, right down in here. I know it's not that big of a deal because it's all blurry. In this case here, once again, we will use the erase tool. And I'll show you a better example of when I'll use clone. Good. Erase. It did a great job. All right, any other areas? No, that's fine. So there's really no distracting elements I'm seeing. But now, let's say here, it doesn't really bother me. I'm just being nitpicky. Let's say that does bother you, all right? Well, this is where clone comes in because if I use the erase tool, it'll do a good job, but look what's around it, all right? So what I want to do is I want to select something other than what's around it. So let's say I pick this area up here. And now, look, I just repeated it. Look, look how neat that was, and it blends it in. If there's ever an area where you want to go over it again and again and again, then take the strength slider over here. Take the strength slider and dial it back and then what's going to happen is it'll come, it'll, you'll brush over the area at a lower strength. So the opacity of what was once there will still be there. But when you're blending the top over it, it'll look a lot nicer. All right. So I have that set and I have to make sure that I click on the tone clone again. And there we have it. So I have it all set. Uh, there's other areas we can work it from there. And then since I did create a preset, uh, my only concern is, well, the rotate, let, let's see. I did create a preset. Keep in mind that if I use this preset, all the changes I've made are going to be erased, obviously, uh, because, <clears throat> because the presets do not save clone. It doesn't save erase. And in this case here, it doesn't save my crop. So if we're going to do this from the beginning, what I'd recommend is do the edits like this first, then go in and now go in and I'll, I'll do it real quick just to show you how fast it is. Then I would go in and do the erase. So orders of operation, that's up to you. I just wanted to show you, I wanted to show you on the raw file how I only did clone and I did the erase. Now I'm going to show you the same techniques, but on an image I've already edited. All right. And see if there's going to be a change. So real quick, we said this was going to be erased. Let's get rid of that. And notice I'm taking it steps at a time. I'm not selecting this, then selecting all the other people. I want to erase 
in, in segments. This isn't a problem because they're far enough apart. That's fine. Now, we did say we had some stragglers way down here. Good. And then once we did all of that, we need, oh, we need to get rid of that area. Good. And then once I have that set, let's run down here to clone. Select this area here. Make the brush a little bit smaller. And we're just going to clone out that area there. And we're set. There we have it. Before, then after. Oh, and one less. Yeah, so I did. Yeah, I did. I did rotate it. Perfect. So we're all set. All right. So that's again a real quick way how to use the clone of the stamp. Could I have used Genitive Erase? Yes. But in this case here, I didn't need it because don't forget, Gen Erase is going to take much longer. And then if I were to do Genitive Swap, same thing, because it's using the AI technology and it brings it up to the cloud, uses the internet, does that, comes down, replaces it, done. So if, let's say, um, I wanted a path going to the church, then you would do Genitive Swap. If I had so many people on the side standing in front of the church, then I would do generative erase because it'll analyze the church. It'll, it'll say, okay, well, I see what you're trying to do here. Here's a person in front of the church. You want me to get rid of this person, but you want me to fill in what's behind him on what I predict is this church based on the, the 3D stuff that it does. So that's when you have to decide. Erase, clone, and now our new features, gen, um, swap, gen erase, and soon to be gen expand. So for us photographers, we have so many tools out there, but number one, get it right in camera. If I showed you some of the other images of when that busload of people showed up, wow, it, it just, it just, but what do you do? It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful site. So I'm not going to yell at people to get out of my shot. I have to do the best that I can. That was the best I could before those people got there. And look how quick we could change it. All right. Well, guys, listen, if you're here, um, if you're watching this on a rebroadcast and you want to join us live, here's the link to join us live um, for the Zoom uh, on Zoom. Because right after this, the people that are watching from our Skylum Insiders, they'll stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment where we'll discuss this and any photography-related questions they may have. All right? Well, guys, if you're here, again, stick around. Everyone else, I'll see you at the next coffee break.